if you, um, I presume you all got the email because you're all here, um, but in the email there was a link to this, to a, a PDF of the book, Roy to um, I actually have two copies of it because somebody gave it to me as a gift and then somebody else gave it to me as a gift. Um, but it's also online and you can flip through it. It's, it's quite a, quite a collection. Um, there's an index in the very back of all of the jokes in here. There are 249 jokes in this, in this little book. It's really a, a treasure. We're only going to read a few of them today. Um, but I'm going to see if I can screen share it here for all of us. Um, let's see here, one page view. Um, okay. For some reason, when I download it to my computer, one of the pages disappears. But if I look at it online, then it works. Here's what I'm going to do. Um, one moment. Okay. All right. Well, 28 people sign up, 14 show up. That's a pretty good turnout. Um, so I guess we'll up. Oh, here comes Label Batwinik. Um, so we'll get started in just a moment. Um, I just took a photo. For some reason, the first page of the jokes disappears when I download it to my computer. So I just took a photo on my phone. And I'm going to send this to my computer with AirDrop. And then I can screen share it. Here we go. Okay. Good. All right. So let's get started. Um, Welcome. This is the first of three days. I'm very excited because Yiddish dialects are are a thing that um, a lot of people talk about. We, you know, a lot of people who know Yiddish, we know, okay, there's Litvak Yiddish, there's Polish Yiddish, Galiziana, Hasidish. Um, and we may know some of the differences. Very often, um, people who learn Yiddish these days learn about differences in the vowels that some people say, oh, others say, ooh, some people say, you know, oi, others say, oh, this is sort of the potato patata version of, of Yiddish dialects. Um, but there are a lot of other differences in terms of prefixes, um, suffixes, word choice, grammar, um, that doesn't often get talked about as much. And so the, the books that we're gonna look at this week, um, I'm very grateful for the one today because it was published in Transliteration. So we can actually see transliterated the different prefixes and the different vowels and all of these different things. Um, tomorrow, we're going to be looking at Arla Vishwanath's translation of Harry Potter, which is wonderful for so many reasons. Um, but one of the reasons is that each of the characters uh, has a different dialect. Dumbledore is very yeshivish. Uh, McGonagall speaks with a Litvak dialect. Um, Hagrid has a sort of country bumpkin uh, Polish dialect. And what Vishwanath does with his uh, translation, as we'll see tomorrow, is he spells it, even though it's in Yiddish letters, he spells it the way that it would be pronounced. Um, and so these books give us a really good way of, of learning about these dialects without necessarily going to an academic textbook, right? We can see it in the actual literature thanks to the, the ways that it's spelled. So let's start. I'm going to share my screen here. And I should also say that if you have any questions throughout this um, workshop, feel free to put them in the chat box. I'll save some time at the end to go over, our, over questions. If you have any insights that you'd like to share with us, if I make any mistakes, which is entirely possible, or if there's just something you'd like to add, 
to the discussion. I'm very excited to learn from all of you as well. Um, this can be a two-way uh, learning process here. So let's begin with the first joke in the book. And uh, this is a good one to start with because right off the bat, it has a handful of Litvakisms, if we could call it, call it that. Um, so I'll read, I'll read in Yiddish. I'll translate line by line into English. And as we go, I'll, I'll explain some of what's going on in terms of the dialect. So this first one is called Wie verlacht. Um, and it begins, As me dazelt am eis apoye, lachte dreimol. When you tell a story, or in this case a joke, to a farmer, he laughs three times. And we already have one of these Litvaks, Litvak differences in prefixes with the third word there, dazelt. Um, the prefix in standard Yiddish would be der, uh, like D-E-R, whereas Litvak, is D-A-R, Dartzelt. Later we'll have the word Darklaren as well. Um, I just heard a ding dong, so I'm gonna let somebody else into the room here. Um, and I, I also wanna acknowledge at the very beginning here that even though we often speak of Litvak Yiddish and Polish Yiddish, there are many different Litvak dialects. It's not that everybody who was a Litvak spoke Yiddish the same way. Um, and so everything that we're seeing here um, may not necessarily be true for all Litvaks, um, but it, it certainly gives us a good sense, uh, and a good general picture to work with. So, as me datzelt, da instead of der, datzelt am meisa, poje lachte dreimol. Dem elschen mol lachte, the first time he laughs, dem me datzelt am die meisa. So again, we have datzelt instead of der zelt. Um, I'm actually going to get out a pen here so that I can draw on the screen and make this a little bit easier for us here. So um, draw, I'm just going to underline the dar and dartelt, dartelt, that prefix. And then we also have the word m instead of im, right? We would expect in standard transliteration im, but em is more the Litvak pronunciation m. Uh, so he laughs the first time when you tell him the joke. He laughs the second time when you explain the joke to him. Uh, with the D-A-R there. The third time he laughs when he understands the joke. Uh, uh, an estate owner laughs two times. Ein mo lachte, the first time he laughs, wenn mit dat right, dar zelt em. So the first time he laughs when you tell him the joke. At zweiten mo wenn mit dat klärt em, dar klärt, instead of der klärt em. The second time he laughs when you explain it, worum verstehen versteht er sich sei wie sei nicht. Because understanding, he, he wouldn't understand it anyways. And here we have one of the more famous of the Litvak elements nit rather than nisht for not. I know if it's a lach no einmol, the shas me dat right? Dat zelt im. An officer laughs only one time when you tell him, worum, because da klaren los de zach nit, because he won't let you explain it und verstehen versteht er nit, and he won't understand it. Um, here's another one of these, um, Litvakism. So you can see it just in this first joke here, there's so, so much we can learn about Litvak Yiddish. Lost as zach nit. In standard Yiddish, we would say lost as zich nisht. So zich, instead of zich, it's zach. Instead of nisht, it's nit. Vorum da kladen los de zach nit. Um verstehen versteht er nit. Aid, rather than yid, aid, as me detailed to my when you tell a, a Jew a joke, you know what? That's an old story. Uh, and he can tell the joke even better. So as we're going through the next handful of, of jokes here, keep these different elements in mind here. The prefix dar rather than der, um, m rather than im, um, nit rather than nisht, and zach rather than zich, um, and id rather than yid. All of these are, are elements which will appear over and over and over again. So if you understand them in the first joke, 
you'll understand them in, in the second joke. I'm just looking in the chat box here. Um, and I see that uh, someone was having some difficulty uh, seeing the screen here. Um, why, why don't you just type in the chat box if um, you're also having trouble. Is anybody else having trouble with, this, with, with seeing the screen here? Paul says it looks like it's just his issue. All right, well, if it, if it is, let me know. Um, meanwhile, let's go on to the next one. A kachke mit ein polke. A duck with one thigh or one, uh, one chicken leg. My understanding is that polka anatomically refers to your thigh, but culinarily it, it refers to a, a drumstick. So um, there we go. A kachke mit ein polka. A klein ingle. Um, right, again, ingle. Uh, this is often today talked about as a uh, as a Hasidish thing. There's a big debate in the four verts between Yiddish with a yud and Yiddish mit an aleph. Um, Yiddish mit an aleph, as opposed to Yiddish, is one of the um, so the the typical ways that we make this distinction between Hasidish Yiddish, as we'll talk on Wednesday, and the Yivo Yiddish, standard Yiddish. Um, but it also is an element of Litvak Yiddish as well. So we'll see here, Eid, Ingel, Ingela, and so forth. So a klein Ingel is a mol arangegangen in Kirch, und hat gesehen, wie es brotzach a kachke. Um, so a, a little boy once went into a kitchen, and he saw how a duck was roasting, as brotzach, rather than zich. Hat er abgerissen ein Polke von der Katschke und hat aufgegessen. So he ripped off one polki, one drumstick, one leg from the kachke, from the duck, and he ate it up. Später ist die Mama rein in Kirch, setzt sie als es falte polke von der kachke. So later the mom went into the kitchen and she saw that there was missing a leg from the kachke, from the duck, hat sie verstanden and she understood as der Ingel hat das gemacht, that the boy did this. Um, so one thing here that I'll, I'll note now grammatically, so far we've just been talking about pronunciation. Uh, one of the, one of the well-known differences between Litvak Yiddish and other kinds of Yiddish is that most kinds of Yiddish have three genders for words, right? There's masculine, feminine, and neuter, der, di, and dos. Uh, whereas in Litvak Yiddish, there's only two. Everything is either der or di only masculine or feminine. So the question is, okay, what do you do then with, with the neutral words, right? For example, ingle, in, uh, in most kinds of Yiddish, in most dialects, yingle is a neuter verb, is a neuter noun without a gender because it's a diminutive, right? A jung is a youth and a yingle, diminutive, is a little boy, so that becomes neutral. Um, same thing with madel, a little girl, a moid, is a young maid, and a maidel is a little one, a little girl. So in most Yiddish, maidel and yingle are both dos, dos yingle, dos maidel. Um, but in Litvak Yiddish, a yingle is der yingle, a maidel is de maidel. So we'll see that as, as well as we go along here. As der yingle hat das gemacht. So she saw that der yingle, the boy, had done this. Is the Iran is true? Was there a question? Jo, ja. ich wollte gerne gefragt. Ähm, ist, ähm, Bichlal sind du bei den männlichen Wörtern, ähm, wird man der Wort ein kleiner, äh, man wird gesagt, ein kleiner Mann, Le Moschel, ist, ja. für was ist ein Unheimchen auf die Masse, ähm, ein klein Ingel, ähm, und nicht anstatt ein kleiner Ingel? Eine gute Frage. And I'm glad that you asked because I was just pondering that myself about two hours ago. Um, I'm not sure. Um, later on, we find that they do say a kleine yingle or a kleine madel. Um, so I'm not sure why in this particular case it's done this way. Um, another thing also to, to keep in mind is that there's the grammatical rules and then there's the way that people speak and people mm -hmm. aren't always consistent. And so it, it's also entirely possible 
that this is just uh, an inconsistency in the Yiddish of the per particular person who told this story. Um, but it's, it's a good question. I'm really glad that you asked that. Um, so, is the Arayin in Stub? The mom went into the into the house, and asked the boy Domingo, uh, if he had if he had taken the the drumstick. Zogt der Yingle, the boy says, as eves von kein Zachnit, that he does not know from anything. Is the mama gegangen and hot dat zelt, right? There's the dar. So the mother went and she told the story for the father. And the Tata had nit gemacht kein lange geschäften. He didn't make any long to do about it. Uh, he didn't waste any time. And had genumen dem ingel und hat him gefragt, right? Ingel hat em, hat em gefragt, fa was er hat aufgegessen die Polke. So the father didn't waste any time. He took the boy and asked him, why he ate the polki, why he ate the leg. Zogt der Ingle. Zogt der Ingle. Ich hab nicht genommen kein polka. I didn't take any polka. Ich hab, ich hab nicht. Um, I'm going to go to the second page here. One of the things that's frustrating about Zoom is that when you switch pages, all the annotations on the screen stay the same. So I'm just saving this page and now I'm clearing it, clear all drawings. And I'm going to um, reshare so that I can go to the next page. Okay. All right. Polkin. Uh, so he says, I don't. I didn't take the polkin. Was haste. Du hast nicht genommen. What do you mean you didn't take? I'm going to start my annotations here again so that I can draw yet again, du hast nit genommen. Wuje is the zweite polka. So where is the second polka? Where's the second drumstick? The Kachka hat gehat in ganzen ein polka. The Kachka only had one polka. Is der Tate geworden in Kass. He became angry und hat gegeben der Mingle die bittere Schmitz. So the father became angry and he gave the little boy, the, the bitter Schmitz, he gave him a, a bitter beating. Gornet, and that's, and that's the end of it. Gornet. Es is a veka porteg, is der Tata mo gegangen mit Ningel spazieren. So a few days went by, and the father went one day um, out for a walk with the boy. Afen weg hat der Ingel, right, der Ingel gesehen, and the boy saw how a kachka was standing on one foot. The other fiesel hat sie gehat verbalten in die Federn. The other foot um, she had hid in her feathers. And this word verbalten is an unusual word. It doesn't show up in the, in the English Yiddish dictionary, the comprehensive English Yiddish dictionary. Um, but when I searched, um, if you don't know about it, the Yiddish Book Center uh, has created a database of Yiddish literature where you can actually search the texts um, called Jochre, J-O-C-H-R-E. So if you search for Yiddish Jochre, you'll find it. So I searched there and it brought up only 12 results from Yiddish literature digitized by the Yiddish Book Center that has this word Farbalten, in one case Farbolten. Um, so I'm not sure if this is a Litvak thing or if this is just a, an unusual variant of the word Farhalten, which is more typical, Farhalten in die Federin and anstatt Farhalten. Um, but that's uh, just an interesting thing to note that's preserved in this text that you don't see very often. So uh, on the way, the boy saw that a duck was standing with one foot and the other foot it was hiding in its feathers. Azoi vidi teva fun lit vishakachkazes. And because that's the nature of Litvak ducks. I'm not that up to date on the, uh, the practices of ducks in Lithuania as opposed to the ducks anywhere else. Apparently they stand on one foot. Um, we'll go further. Hot de yingle, 
hat der Jingle das gewiesen dem Taten und hat ihm ähm, gesagt. The boy showed this to the father und hat ihm ähm, gesagt and showed and said to him, Ses Tate, hat die Katschke hat euch nur ein Polke. You see, father, this duck also only has one, one leg. Tu favus hast du mich damals geschmissen. Also ich habe gesagt, dass die Katschke hat gar einen ganzen ein Polke. Tu, so now here we get into a little bit of word choice. Um, tu, or as sometimes we also see the variant to, uh, which comes from, from Russian. To favos, tu favos meaning, uh, so then, why uh, hast du mich damals geschmissen? Why did you beat me then when I told you that the Katschke had entirely just one foot? Uh, hat der Tate genommen, so der Tate uh, went and uh, took a stick, hat mit den Stecken weggetrieben die Katschke and drove away the duck with a stick and hat gewiesen dem Ingel and showed the Ingel uh, how the duck was running away on both feet. Um, Fieslach. Um, if you've ever heard people say Kinderlach versus Kinderlach, Fieslich versus Fieslach, that's a Litvak thing, the Ach ending, as opposed to the Ich. The Polish Jews would be more likely to say Fieslich, the Litvak say Fieslach. Zogt der Ingel, tu favus hast du jene Katschke nicht abgetrieben mit den Stecken, so why didn't you drive away the other duck with a stick? Efsche wo sie euch gekrogen noch apolke. Maybe she would have also grown another foot. All right. Von was macht man Kleider? Sie mögen mich mal fragen, ob es wegen Award in, in Ottemasa? Ja. Ähm, es steht, du, du verwusst, hast du mich damals mit einem mit, mit ein S in so. Ähm, ja. In den Klan Jüdisch äh, wollte man den Wert äh, der Mold. Nicht das mhm. euch? Mit der S. Ja. Um, so I've, I've heard three different versions of this word. Damals, uh, Demolt and demolts, with a tzadi at the end. And I don't know uh, the difference among them. It's possible that damols is, is, a, is, a is a Litvak thing. Perhaps somebody knows and they can put into the chat box. Um, but that's a great observation. And now I'm looking in the chat box as well, and Paul says that um, to comes actually from Polish rather than Russian. Uh, I believe you. I've studied Russian and Polish, but I'm not... Uh, a great maven in either of them. So I appreciate the, the correction here, coming from Polish rather than, than Russian. All right, and, um, oh, interesting. Label Batwinnik writes in the chat box, Farbalten comes from Farbahalten. Um, interesting. Uh, Bahalten meaning hidden, Farbahalten, Farbalten. So the Ba and the Ha mixed together, that's, that's interesting. Uh, thank you for, for sharing that. Um, my iPad says, from Russian too, I don't know who you are, but if iPads could talk, they would certainly know Yiddish and they would be experts in Yiddish etymology. Tevye. Thank you, Tevye. All right. Um, let's go on. And the very first word of the next one is one of these great words that the first time I read this book, I thought, what in the world is this word? What are we doing with a train at the beginning of this sentence, right? The Yiddish word ban means train, but in Litvish, ban is another way of saying ba or by. So instead of by uns, ban uns. And my impression is that this happens when uh, by is followed by something that begins with a vowel. So you would say ba mir, um, but ban uns, ban im. Um, that's my, my guess. Um, of what's going on. Um, but we also find, for example, tsun, um, and in some cases, tsunim, um, which is, I, I, I can actually vividly remember walking down the street in Manhattan with uh, Menachem Yankel Edelman, if you happen to know Menachem Yankel. And I was telling him about this book, and I said, what is this ban uns? What is this tsunim? And he laughed and said, oh, yeah, 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 that's just, you know. He said, my Bobby used to talk like that. Um, so that's, uh, that's funny. I have these vivid memories of, of learning these very specific things. All right, so uh, Paul says in the chat box, I just happened to speak both Polish and Russian. And Poles use to in the very same context as in that sentence. 
all the time, well, Russians would rather use nu or nu tak, nu tagda. But well, I'm not a specialist when it comes to Yiddish, so I don't know. Um, but thank you anyways for putting that in the, in the chat box. Uh, we don't need to be experts necessarily in order to know a thing or two. Um, so you should never be afraid of sharing your knowledge, uh, even if you think that maybe you're not the world's greatest expert. You still have something to share. So that's wonderful. All right. Banuns in Shtetl is given a cheder. So by us in, in our Shtetl, there was a cheder. Was the Malamed is given fundi haintika. And the teacher, the Malamed, was a very modern uh, person. Is also was a flek miti kinder chumash. Oser. Uh, instead of oiser. I never thought of that as a Litvak thing. I always thought of that as more of a Polish thing. Um, it may be that that's also a Litvak thing. It may be that some Litvaks say oiser, some say oiser. Um, I'm not sure. Um, either way, it's not oiser, it's not forbidden. So we'll, we'll go with this. This is very consistent in this book though. Is oiser was a flaglenim mit die Kinder chumish mit Rashi. And aside from learning chumish and the, you know to Torah and Rashi's commentaries with the children. Flecked as a lernen noch andere Sachen. He used to teach them other things. Flecked mit se schmusen von der Natur, von Blumen, von Feugelach. He would schmooze with them, talk with them about nature, flowers, birds. And here we have Feugelach. Some Litvaks would say Feigelach um, instead of the oi vowel, the a vowel. Uh, so this is interesting to see Feugelach rather than Feigelach, but the Ach ending is definitely Litvak. Von Feigelach. Zu was hat er das getan? Weiß ich nicht. And for what purpose he did this? Weiß ich nicht. I don't know. Zu was darf a jidische Jingle? Here we get the double E instead of jidische Jingle. And instead of a Yiddish Yingle, right? A Yiddish Yingle with the ER ending because Yingle is masculine here. So, was darf a Yiddish Yingle wissen? Wie der Blum heißt, oder wie jene Feugel quietscht? So, what does a Jewish boy need to know what this flower is called or how that bird tweets? Egentlach, um, I've seen Egentlich, Egentlach for the Litvax, is das ein Eisig vergoyim. Apparently, this is an issue for non-Jews to deal with. Ober de malamed von unser Städtel hat a zoi gewelt und fartig. But the teacher of our Städtel, that's how he wanted it, und fartig. And that's the end of the story. Is einmal, is am eingefallen zu da klären die Kinder? Is am eingefallen zu da klären die Kinder? Zu was ist teugen alle meine Chaies? It occurred to the Malabid one day to uh, explain to the children what purpose all of the different animals have. Uh, Heine, for example, to vos darf man haben cats? For what purpose do we need to have cats? A poshete a simple thing. As is yidua, it's, it's well known as cats fressen mice, that cats eat mice, is, so as a as a mos falterein in a top milk and as a so when a, a mouse falls in a pot of milk, waft men arein in top of cats and the cats frest of the mos. So the you throw if a mouse falls into a pot of milk, you throw a cat into the milk, and the cat eats the mouse, and in this way you're going to uh, save the milk. Ratavit men di milk. So I'll clear these annotations here. Ratavit mendi milch. That way you save the milk. Unochazel chazachen and other such things. Nu yankala. And so vos darf man haben shepsen. And so yankala, uh, for what purpose do we need to have sheep? Frag the malamed ayingal. The malamed asks ayingal, a child. Schweigt der ingal and das ingal. Schweigt der ingal. The boy is silent. Zog dem. Der Rebbe, nu, was nebt man erop von Schepsen? Nu, what do you take, what do you take from sheep? Giet der Engel ertracht, und sagt der Engel, wo, Rebbe, wo, Rebbe? Und so was teuges, and what, what purpose does wo have? Weiß der Engel nicht. 
they stay in gal net. Fragt der Rebbe. The Rebbe asks, Scheute, you idiot. Was macht man von wall? What do you make from wall? Beis der Ingel weiter net. Beis der Ingel weiter net. Goyische Kopf. Von wo soll man gemacht ein Reckel? Uh, Goyische Kopf. Uh, one of many uh, insults in Yiddish that is targeted at non-Jews, non-Jewish head. Von wo soll man what do you make? What, what did they make your jacket from? Zog der Ingel von Taten zu Port Alta Häusen. So the boy says, they made my jacket from my father's old pants. All right. Let's see, we're doing great on time here. Um, I want to share with you just a couple of more. <coughs> Label points out Gewalt versus Gewalt. Hat der Malamed Gewalt in Ungoinet, right? That's what the, the, the teacher wanted. Um, all right, Ari, and this one is Da, 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 ari, which is short for Ari Ber, and we'll find out where this comes from. Apparently, there was um, an expression in the place where this particular story was collected. Um, there's an expression, Ich bin schon Ari. And the question is, what does that mean and where does it come from? So that's what this, this story explains. Shabbos noch in Cholent, Zanen zechiden arosoi auf dem Feld spazieren. So Shabbos after Cholent, meaning Shabbos afternoon, after lunch, zanen sich, instead of zenen, zanen sich, Eden, aros, auf dem Feld spazieren. So Shabbos afternoon, uh, some Jews went out for a walk in the field. Balabatim, mit zera Weiber und Kinder, so uh, married men with their women, with their wives and their children. Uh, balabatim instead of balabosim. On eina a idna, idna instead yidna, eina a idna is gigagen mit et lacha kinderlach, et lach kinderlach. Der jüngste von se, a ingel von a jorzim, is given a groise stiefe. And the youngest of them, a boy of approximately seven years, was a great troublemaker. He was a prankster. Und wie sie right, zanen and stot zanen. Uh, wie sie zanen gekommen zu ein Ort, wo es ist gewähne tiefe Graben, hat der Engel gewollt, arriba springen über den Graben. Uh, so when they came to, an, to a place where there was a deep uh, ditch, the boy wanted to jump over the ditch. Here we have der Engel gewollt, earlier we had gewelt. Uh, so there's, there's some inconsistency see here between gewelt and gewolt. Uh, oops, there's a, a ding dong. I'm going to let somebody in here. Um, admit, great. All right, fight in. Um, let's see. Hat der Engel gewollt, arriba springen über den Graben. Just like with sich und sach, exactly. Gewelt, gewolt. So the boy wanted to jump over the Graben, over the ditch. Zog dem uh zogd em di mama berle springnet worum wirst reinfallen und wirst sach zu brechen ruck und hand don't jump berle because you'll fall in and you'll break ruck und hand and there's a footnote here about this expression ruck und hand what does that mean it's an interesting expression because ruck is your back right and so you might think oh you're going to fall and you're going to break your back and your hands but why ruck rather than uh, Ruken. And the uh, theory given in the footnote here is that uh, Ruk is from the Russian word for hands, and Hans is from the German word for hands. So you're going to break hands and hands. Uh, combining the Russian and, and the German, it's like the wonderful expression um, Prost and Poshit, simple and simple, where Prost comes from Russian, Poshit comes from Hebrew, um, but they mean the same thing. So that could also be what's going on here, Ruk und Hans, uh, hands from Russian, hands from German. Um, but it's, it's an interesting expression. Perhaps one of you knows about it and you can share in the chat box. Um, but let's go further. A boy who's a troublemaker, can he hold himself in? So he took a jump, and he yelled out, Mama, ich bin schon Mama, I'm, I, I'm already 
Oh, right, er hat sich, er hat noch nicht aus Bier da schreien, ist er schon gelegen in Graufen im Gesicht. So, he didn't, uh, he didn't manage to, to finish yelling out. Here we get this word of spiet from Russian, um, nit. Um, if, you, uh, if you're familiar with Hasidic Yiddish, then you probably know that there are a lot of English words in Hasidic Yiddish. And if you're familiar with Litvak Yiddish, then you'll, you're probably, you probably know that there's a lot of Russian words and Ukrainian words in, um, in Litvak. Yiddish. So we have Uspiet Oshrayin is a shoin gelegen in Grobman Gazeft. So he was, he hadn't managed to finish yelling and he was already lying in the pit and sighing Gazeft. Umfundane Nemtmen Nemtzach dos Vertel, ich bin shoinari. And from there we get this expression, ich bin shoinari. Uh, I don't know if any of you have heard that expression before. I had never heard it except for in this story. Um, that's fun to uh, see this expression uh, preserved there. Okay, I tried to scroll down and all the annotations go with me. So I'm gonna clear all those. Um, Paul so writes, Michael, yeah, go this ahead. Is, this is Chikava, as we said, do in Litvak Yiddish, in Sof in the Masse, nemt zach dos vertel, as we find do das neutral pronomen. Yes, that's interesting. I hadn't noticed that. That's a very good observation. Why does it say dos vatel if Litvak Yiddish doesn't have dos? So good to Kasha. It's a good question. Um, Paul writes in the chat box, I know a good example from a language somewhat similar to Yiddish, Vilamovian. They say, Di Gazette Zeitung, newspaper, which is a contamination of Polish Gazeta and Zeitung, German Zeitung. It's not Yiddish, but the mechanism is the same. Okay, so I have to take this opportunity now and tell you some of my favorite Yiddish etymology because I'm a nerd and I'm guessing that all of you are nerds or else you wouldn't be in this Zoom call about Yiddish dialects either. Um, so some of my favorite Yiddish words are the words um, unterhaden and unterwachsen, which sound like good German words, except there's no such word as unterwachsen in the German language. There's no such word as unterhaden in the German language. So where do we get these words from? Well, unterwachsen means to grow up which is strange because unter means down. So was heis, right? What does this mean? Unter wachsen, growing down means growing up. Well, the reason we have this Yiddish word is because we have a Russian word, padrasti, which means to grow up. And pad, the prefix pad means unter and rasti means wachsen. So both parts of the Russian word were translated using the German equivalents into Yiddish. So we get this word unter wachsen, which comes from Russian with German components, but it only exists in Yiddish. And it's a similar thing with the word um, unterhaden, to overhear, right? In, in English, we say overhear. Why in Yiddish do we say underhear, unterhaden, for uh, eavesdrop? Uh, well, it comes from Russian again, from podslushit, uh, which means to, to eavesdrop or to overhear. Pod again means unter, slushit means uh, hadden. So podslushit, unterhaden. Um, that's how we get it. Um, so this is a very, I, I, I love that sort of thing. All right. Anyways, um, let's, uh, let's keep going. Uh, we're almost, oh, yes, we got to the end of it. Okay, next one. Let's do this for another, uh, another couple of ones here. I wanted to get through Oslan and Derecheretz. Um, so I think we'll have enough time to get through two more and then we can pause and have more of a, more of a discussion. So, punkt getroffen. Uh, you guessed it perfectly. A junge Weibel, a gata ingel. Let me get my pen out here again. A junge Weibel, instead of a jung Weibel, a junge Weibel hat gehat a ingel. So, a young, a young wife, a young, yeah, a young wife gave birth to a, a boy. Hat doch der Weibels Mama Moire gehat as imitzer, instead of emitzer, hat doch der Weibels Mama Moire gehat, as imitzer von die Schreinem, soll nicht geben dem Kind keine Nora. So the, the wife's mother was afraid that somebody from the, uh, from the neighbors, I suppose some Litvaks might say Schreinem, here it's a Schreinem, soll nicht 
gave him the King Kenanar. So the, the mother's mother was afraid that one of the neighbors would curse the child or would give the child bad luck in some sort of way. So she waited. So when she saw that people were starting to arrive, she um, took the child out of the, cr the cradle and she put inside of the cradle a hintel, a little dog. Eina an alta Eden is a rain. Um, uh, an old lady, an old Jewish lady came in, is it two gigang and some vigala, and she went to the cradle. When abyssal at zinit darzain, at zinit, and then the prefix dar rather than darzain, darzain. Uh, so this old lady went in, she went to the cradle, and she didn't see a little bit, meaning she was a little bit blind. She bent over a kuketon and gizokt, and she took a look and she said, Oi, a gizuntim, a kurate tate. Oh, a blessing on his head. He looks just like the father. A gizuntim, a kurate tate. All right, let's do one more here. Oslan and Derecheretz. Aida Yeshuvnik, Aida Yeshuvnik, what you have to put in there, what is the event again, my Rebbe Minshtat? So a Jew, uh, a country, a country Jew, uh, had a couple of children, and he gave them away to a Rebbe in the city. But to get at mit the Rebbe, as a lot of game, my kinder, they zone good learning, zone it too feel stiffen cholila. So he spoke with the Rebbe, and he told the Rebbe that he should give attention to the children. He should teach them well. They shouldn't too feel stiffen. They shouldn't cause too much mischief. Cholila, God forbid. When befrat sok there, and in particular, he says, "Voltechaych gebeten is zolt ze os lernen a bissel derecheretz." But in particular, I want to ask you that you should teach them a little bit of derech eretz, a little bit of respect. They zolen nit as I will sein. They shouldn't be so wild. They zollen wissen, wie er soll zu reden und wie er soll zu tun. They should know how to speak and how to behave, how to act. Der Rebbe ist maskem gewesen und hat ihm zugesagt. The Rebbe agreed and told him and, and promised and promised him to learn in die Kinder der Herz and promised to learn the children der Herz. In a halb Jahr rum, in around half a year, is der Tate gekommen in Stutt. The Tate came back into the city. Is er gegangen sein die Kinder? And he went to see the children. Fragde dem Rabbi, he asked the Rabbi, "Nu, was is mit meine Kinder? Nu, what's what's with my kids? How are my kids doing?" So the Rabbi, the Rabbi says, "Ganz gut, sie lernen zach, ganz fein. Shot lernen zich, sie lernen zach, ganz fein." Yeah, so the Yeshuvnik. When I I first encountered yeah, I used to think that this was sort of a informal thing, like the English yeah. Um, but then at some point I learned that actually this is just the Litvak version of yo. That in Poland they say yo, and in Lithuania they say yeah. Yeah, zokte yeshuvnik, yes, says the, the country Jew. But I told you that you should teach them derecheretz. You should teach them some respect. Here, you tell me yourself. So here, tell me yourself, I came from, from home, and they didn't even ask me if their mother is healthy. The Rebbe says, So, don't have any worries. Uh, you'll see, you'll come another time. And they'll all, and, and at that point, they'll know derecheretz, they'll know respect. Deid is a vekyeforen, und die Kinder haben weiter gelernt ban Reben in Stadt. So here we have ban Reben, just like earlier we had banuns in Stadt. Ban Reben in Stadt. Epis in the Chadoshim Tzferum is de Yeshuv nek weiter given in Stadt. So in, in a couple of months, approximately, uh, the Yeshuv nek 
came back to the city and he went to the children. And via geht er einen Stub, läufen die Kinder zu ihm zu und fragen, Tate, Tate, die Mom ist noch gesund? So as soon as he goes into the stub, into the room, the children run zu ihm, zu, right? Instead of zu ihm, zu ihm, zu und fragen, Tate, Tate, is, is our mother healthy? So that's, um, that's the last joke that I had for you. And um, I, uh, I can't help myself. I have to tell you the next joke because the next joke as it happens is one of my favorites in the book. Um, and we've got plenty of time here. So, um, so let's clear this, these annotations and let's go on. We'll do Kibadav and then we'll open it up for questions and comments. All right. Kibad Av, uh, honoring the father. Aid hat amol gewelt a trunk vase. So here we have Aid amol gewelt instead of gewelt. Amol a gewelt amol Aid hat amol gewelt a trunk vase. So a Jew once wanted a drink of water. Zog de seine Kinder. So he says to his children, "Ze zolnem gain bring bringen a trunk vase that they should go and bring M. They should bring him." A uh, drink of water. Hom zach kinder ungeheuim schlagen, and the children began to fight amongst themselves. Der zogt echogain und der zogt echogain. So this one says I'll go. This one says I'll go. Jede einzige hat gewelt ton die große mitzvah von kibedav. Each one wanted to perform the great mitzvah of kibedav of honoring your father. And azoi. The Aid had doch beteva a zimach kindalach, kindalach, and since a Jew has naturally seven or eight children, hotman zach grisim vegan dem, ver as zolgain a shame bis a shame tight. So, and since a Jew naturally has seven or eight children, they were um, fighting, literally tearing each other apart over this for. Regarding who should go get the glass of water, a shame bisseltite for a good amount of time. I'm not sure gerisim here, rather than gerisim. Um, oftentimes, when you're speaking Yiddish, um, the final nun is pronounced as if it were a final mem. Uh, gerisim becomes gerisim uh, when it's not accented. So I don't know if that's what's going on here or if this is a typo. Um, but that's definitely not just a litvak thing. Um, in fact, even in standard Yiddish, our, you know, Yiddish, uh, standard Yiddish teachers always say Yiddish, standard Yiddish is completely phonetic. Every sound has one letter, every letter has one sound. It's not true. Even in standard Yiddish, it's not true. And this is an example where even in standard Yiddish, you would say grisim with a, with a, a mem at the end rather than an. Um, so uh, again, I don't know if this is a typo, if it's just, you know, if that's the reason, but it's not specifically a Litvak thing. Anyways. So they tore each other up over who should go, a shame bissel type. The elder brother had gesehen, the older brother saw, as this nemt came softnit, that the older brother saw that there wasn't going to be an end to this, had gesagt. So he said, Weist ihr was kinderlach? Ich will euch geben zwei Rubel, nur los mir gehen, bringen die Wasser fantaten. I will give you all two Rubel, but just let me go and bring water to our father. Mach der zweite Bruder, was mit zwei Rubel? What, what do I care about two Rubels? Ich will auch geben fünf Rubel. I'll give you all five Rubel. Nur los mir mekan sein die Mitzvah, but let me uh, fulfill the Mitzvah. Und ein anderer hat gesagt, dass er gibt sieben Rubel. Another said that he'll give seven Rubels. Und ein anderer acht Rubel. And another will give eight Rubel. Zog der älter Bruder wieder. And so the older brother says once more, Ich will euch geben 10 Rubel und es auf. I will give you 10 Rubels and, and that's it. Is es euch geblieben? And so that's how it was. Der ältere soll gehen bringen die Wasser. The older one should go bring the water. I don't know if bringen is a Litvak thing. I would say bringen. So I don't know bringen versus bringen, if that's a Litvak thing or, or if there's something else going on there. So gehen bringen die Wasser. Gibt der ältere Bruder eine Tracht? And so, so the older brother, he thinks for a moment and he says, Weist ihr was kinderlach? You know what, children? Die mitzvah is doch sehr größer. The mitzvah is, is, of course, it's a really big mitzvah. 
So we will give the honor to our father himself. So, dear father, go and bring yourself a glass of water. Um, Tatinke um, is one of these Slavic diminutives of Tatin. Tatinke, Tatinu, Tatashi, um, Tatinke. All right. So that's what I've got for you all today. You have the link. As I said, there are, I think, 249 jokes in this book. Yes, 249. Why there aren't 250? Maybe that's a joke. I don't know. But um, you have the book now. So if you're interested in this, you can read more. Um, but for now, let's um, go to the chat box and type in any questions that you have, any comments, uh, complaints, compliments, anything you'd like to share. And for the next few minutes, we can, um, we can have a conversation here. So I'm just looking back through and seeing if there's anything I missed on the first way through. Um, let's see. Wahrscheinlich Komplimenten. A größen, größen, jischer Geuch. Ich darf neber schön gehen, aber ich freue mich gute Sache auf morgen. Und der Dank für die handige Sitzung. Gute Nacht, gute Sache. All right, gut. Bis morgen. Bis morgen. Ciao. All right, so. Uh, oh, noch eine Frage. Ja, ja. Es, du, es wird du seine Rekordierung von dem handigen Seminar, nicht das? Uh, yes. Um, I think it should be, yes, it is recording. So I'm going to uh, post this recording up so that you can rewatch this if you'd like. And if you know anybody who wasn't able to make it, who would like to see it, you can feel free to share the link with them. So I'll email that out to everybody as soon as that's up. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Ah. Ähm, zwei Sachen, was dem, dem Schien mit dem Sinn, ob wir es nicht gesehen in dem Eis ist, aber ja. noch wichtiger ist der Oi und der Ei. Da muss man Lied wach, wir sagen Teure und nicht Teure, er wird essen Breit und nicht Breit right. und so weiter. Das ist sehr typisch Litwisch. Yes, and I, I was curious to see that this book isn't like that that it uses oi instead of a. Um, but if you are familiar with, um, I think it's Manny Leib who wrote Ingel Tzingel Chvat. Um, there was recently a, a republication uh, of, of that. You can also find it online. It's a classic Yiddish children's story in rhyme. And when I was learning this, this story with one of my students a couple of months ago, we had to use Litvak pronunciation or else the rhymes wouldn't work. You had to say breit, right? Because otherwise it wouldn't rhyme. You had to say nate because otherwise it wouldn't rhyme. And um, so, so if, you, if you do, I know some of you told me in your emails that you were interested in, in this because you're interested in poetry. Um, so if you, if you ever read Ingel Tzingel Chvat, keep this in mind. Or even if you sing, sing music, some of you are interested in music, um, I used, to, um, I used to sing a number of years ago with the Jewish People's Philharmonic Chorus in New York City, conducted by the inimitable Binyamin Schachter. And one thing that I remember very well from the rehearsals is that he was very particular about using appropriate dialects in order to make the rhymes. Um, he would be very, very upset if we said Gekumen, if Gekumen didn't rhyme with whatever it was supposed to rhyme with, we had to say Gekimen in order to make the rhyme or vice versa. Um, all right, well, let's see what other uh, comments there are here in the chat box. Um, what are the chances that some of the words that seem off from what we would expect are due to typographical errors? I would not be surprised at all if that's the case. Um, that's why I was mentioning, for example, with Gerisim, that could very well have been just a typo. Um, but, but typos are certainly not unheard of. I have to say that I learned Yiddish myself as an adult. And one of the greatest moments for me was when I was reading Dos Kluge Schneiderl, um, which is a wonderful children's novel. And I was able to notice all of the typos in the book. 
without looking them up in the dictionary and not finding them. I just knew, ah, this is a typo. So it's a great moment for me. But um, yes, it's entirely possible those are typos. Um, look at the beginning of the book for transliteration rules. Oi with umlaut is like A. Um, I, I, I actually checked that, double checked that again today because I was curious about that. And it says that hayoim is like between the oi and boy and the ur and hertz. Oh, so maybe that means a. Um, and I'm just not understanding the pronunciation guide. Um, so I don't know if that's a or if it's more like a. Um, you know, thinking about the o with the umlaut like u, u. I'm not sure. Um, but that's a really a really good point. It's it's entirely possible that that's. But then why it would be like that rather than e y, um, which it says here in the pronunciation guide a in a veda, like the a y in way. So I'm not sure, um, but it's it's a it's a really good question. Um, all right. So I think, if I'm not mistaken, that I have a student. Now or in half an hour? If I have a student now, I have to go. If not, I can go in two minutes. I'm just checking my schedule. Um, let's see, what is, what is today? Today is Monday. Um, I have a student now. So, and then another student after that and another student after that. It's a busy day. So, thank you all so much. And uh, I will hopefully see you tomorrow when we will talk about Harry Potter and the Philosophische Stein and the Philosophical Stone. Um, I'll send you an email as a reminder. And if you have any questions, any comments at all, feel free to email me creativeshuli at gmail.com and I uh, will be in touch. Otherwise, see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Ashenem dank. Ashenem